Talk Steel, Luke here. And when I got the Mustang, it was clear that it had been raced. From the fake peel and carbon fibre trim to the huge wing on the back, it was just too much. So after fixing a number of electrical faults, link at the end of this video, it was time to tackle the bodywork. Join me in part 1 of the bodywork where I tackle the wheels, rear lights, bumper, side skirts and a couple of other trim panels. Part 2 will be coming soon where I finish the bodywork off so be sure to stay tuned and subscribed so you don't miss it. Black and red is a fantastic colour combination and although I love the concept, the execution in this case was pretty poor. And this didn't help the black parts were in cosmetically bad shape too. So I'm going to carry on with this theme, changing some other parts to black and putting some back to red. The idea is I want the colours to flow and complement each other and at the moment it feels like they're clashing. I started by removing various parts of the car. This included the spoiler which is not coming back since I have an alternative to stick back on. A sail panels, side skirts, mirrors and rear lights. Oh and this also included the UV damage tint on the windows and the oversized badge on the rear. First up, probably the easiest part, and this was the tinting of the rear lights. The lenses were dull and faded and needed a little bit of a revamp. Part of me wants to turn the black surround on these back to red, but I'm going to run with black for now just to see what I think. They're pretty easy to remove, so it won't be too hard to change it back in the future if I don't like it. I scuffed the lights up with some 1200 grit sandpaper and hit it with a few coats of lens tint spray. I have a full video on my channel on how to do this properly, so check it out if you're interested. I'm going to stick some brighter LED bulbs in at some point to help offset the darker light output of the lights. Then onto the rear bumper. One of my favourite design choices of this car is the recessed Mustang rating and I really wanted that to stand out. So I bought some rear valance decals which were gloss black which will help the Mustang lettering really stand out. And whilst I'm at it, I wanted to turn the bottom part of the rear bumper gloss black in between the exhausts. I'm going to wrap this so it was important to make sure that the bumper was as clean as possible beforehand. I washed and clay barred the lettering and bumper to remove all contaminants and give the stickers and wrap something to adhere to. This is my first time wrapping part of a car, so I was a little bit nervous as to how well it would turn out. I placed some knifeless tape down in the groove first before getting to work on the wrap itself. And what YouTube videos don't really convey is how hard you have to pull on this stuff. Think like a tug of war and that you're trying to actually pull the other person over and you start to get the idea. It's also a bad idea to use a heat gun too much as you can overstretch the wrap. It can start to bunch itself back together at a later date. So ideally you want to aim for just about a 10% stretch. It was really just a case of pull and squeegee over and over again, using heat only when necessary. Overall, I was extremely pleased with how it turned out, and don't worry about that scab on the bumper, I'll be tackling that in part 2. Next up, one of the major letdowns of the car was all four wheels. I liked the design, but the kerb marks on them were just truly awful, so I decided to refurbish the outer part. The wheels were stuck on good though, and even a lump hammer wasn't to move them. The only thing for it was to unleash my inner Chuck Norris. In 
the eyes of a ranger, the unsuspecting stranger had better know the truth of wrong from right. Cause the eyes of the ranger are upon you. Any wrong you do, he's gonna see. When you're in Texas, look behind you. Cause that's where the ranger's gonna be. Of course, I needed to make sure that they were as clean as possible, so I hosed them down and dried them off with an old towel. I then took some bleed and fallout remover, autoglim magma in this case, and sprayed it over the inside of the wheel first. I let it dwell for a few minutes before spraying some on a magic eraser. This worked a treat and I then did the same thing to the face of the wheel. I went over the curb rash with some 80 grit paper to remove any dirt before masking the area off. I then took some aluminium reinforced filler and that's aluminium reinforced filler for my North American viewers and proceeded to rebuild the lip. I'm no expert at this, as you can tell, but I found it hard to get a smooth and consistent shape around the entire rim. So I basically resigned myself to the fact I would have to go over the rim a second time to target anything I didn't get the first time round. I sent it down with some 80 grit sandpaper and it turned out pretty well in the end. Not perfect, but miles better than they were. I then masked the rest of the wheel off and went over the edge of the rim with some grey filler primer. Then I applied some guide coat to help me get a smooth finish, which I sanded down with some 600 grit before covering it with some satin black paint. Once sufficiently dry, I applied some clear coat to make it shiny. Next day, I took my machine polisher with a G3 compound and pad and buffed the old paintwork on the face of the wheel to turn it from a satin finish to a gloss one to match the rest of the car. I was pretty happy with the results. Flaking mirrors were a problem and I went about disassembling them, partly because I needed to fix the electrical faults with them which I covered in my other video. I scraped the flaking paint off, and in hindsight this may have not been the best way to go about it, before sanding the remaining paint down, then I hit some filler primer and gloss black paint. I 
have to give a similar treatment to the panel that sits under the wiper blades. Like the mirrors, a lot of it was flaking and looked bad. They had also painted the rubber seals, which was an awful idea, so I had to go over them with 80 grit to remove the clear coat paint and primer that had been applied to them. The rubbers look understandably dull, but I will try to put some life back into them in a future detail. Then I sanded down the rest with some 320 grit and applied some filler primer to cover any minor imperfections and used some guide coat to get a better finish. Then 3 coats of satin black followed by 3 coats of clear. The side skirts were in better shape and didn't require any primer so it was just a case of sanding with 320 grit followed by 600 and then the same steps of satin black and clear coat. Overall, the car stands look a lot more solid, so join me in part 2 where I paint the sail panels and other various trim pieces red, add a spoiler and add to get the car finished off in time for full detail. And once again, thank you for watching, take care and see you in part 2.